Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Daz's Top 20 Selling Comic Books of the Week, episode 74. And today I'm going to be discussing the best-selling comics on eBay for the week ending May the 22nd, 2020. Since CoverPost.com came on the scene, they've become a go-to spot for watching eBay trends on comics, and they scour thousands of eBay sales to covenant data to spotlight the hottest selling books. As always, guys, let's find out if you can beat me we got the full 20 this time round. Starting in at number 20. And it's a big boy book. And we're talking a huge book. It's a book I pretty much told myself I will never own, sadly. With no new books coming on the scene, collectors are seeking out big key issues with big key first appearances. And this one... For some people is the holy grail of comics. The book in question guys is The Amazing Spider-Man issue 129. Yeah, I think I've missed the boat on this one guys. Crazy prices right now. What did it do? The first appearance of the Punisher. Frank Castle. Well, it sold 15 copies this time around. It had a seven day trend, a plus 94%, and a high sale CGC 9.4. Get ready for it. Went for a whopping $2,900. I'm not sure if I got the facsimile. I have to go back through my collection. Or is it the True Believers? I think it's the True Believers. That's as good as I'm going to get. Number 19 on our list is always. A good seller on my top 20. It could be my mascot for the top 20. It's consistently fighting to show up on the list and it's back again. The book in question from 1992, an image book, you probably guessed it, Spawn issue number one. Yeah, the first solo Spawn series. This is the first appearance of Jason Wynn, male Boglia. Wanda Fitzgerald, Sam Twitch, Stephen Percival. It's the second title published by Image Comics with some stunning Todd McFarlane cover art. Now, we were supposed to be getting a Jamie Foxx-led Spawn movie, but I think that fell through. But I think that Todd McFarlane has just come out and announced that they've got a new big name attached in the leading role. Now, Jeremy Renner, I think, was... Was he signed on to play Sam or Twitch? I think it was Sam. So, uh, again, he's had a few problems. So we'll see whether he will stay with his casting. But the book sold 16 copies. It had a seven-day trend of plus 87%. And high sale CGC 9.8 went for $110. They usually go around in that range, which is steady. You know, this book is hugely mass-produced. What did I get paid for my copy? The grand total of £1.31 off the legend. That is Carboot Tony. And if you haven't seen Carboot Tony, check back through my videos to find the comic Santa in all his glory at the Carboot selling books. Number 18 on our list. We're getting into the Spider-Verse. Number two. And at the end, in the post credit scenes of Into the Spider-Verse, number one. We had the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099. Yeah, he cropped up. And he's getting his fair share now of MCU rumours too. The book in question, the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099 is Amazing Spider-Man, issue 365. Yeah, this is a preview appearance of Spider-Man 2099. Of course, is Miguel O'Hara. Really good, funny little scene at the end of Into the Spider-Verse 1. And he turns up in an advertisement in this book. Now, the debate is on. We've got uh, Spider-Man 2099 issue 1 for the first full appearance. I've got that as well. Now, this is an anniversary of Spider-Man's 30th year from 62 to 92. And it's cover art featuring a hologram of Spider-Man. Yeah, you can just about make it out. What did it do? Well, it continues to sell and it sold 14 copies this time round with a seven day trend of plus 132% and a high sale raw copy near mint went for $22.50. I 
I paid $8.99 for mine. It's probably VF range. Uh, and that was in the back end of 2018. We're moving on and we're sticking with Amazing Spider-Man. In at number 17, a book from 1992. Carnage is coming, yeah, we know this. Woody Harrelson, I'm a big fan of the actor. And we just have to wait a little bit longer to see him in action. Yeah, he had the like, Ronald McDonald wig in the uh, post credit scenes of Venom number one. But he's had a short back and sides for the sequel. The book in question, we all know it. Amazing Spider-Man issue 361 is our 17 on our list this time round. The first full appearance and origin of Carnage, Cletus Cassidy. Like I said, going to be played by Woody Harrelson. Now, this is the second overall appearance of Carnage as he had a one-page cameo panel in the previous issue. Amazing Spider-Man issue 360. But this time round, this book sold 14 copies and it had a seven-day trend plus 102 percent and a high sale cgc 9.6 went for 225 dollars i'm debating whether to get this one uh, graded it's pretty high grade and uh, i paid 50 pounds for this which at the time believe it or not was the most i'd ever paid uh out in the world you know i, I think i paid 40 odd online before but that was the most i'd ever spent at the time and that was in the middle of 2018 at the collectomania con in birmingham I was quite nervous paying just £50, believe it or not. Now, number 16 on our list, and we're sticking with Marvel. It is from 1984. And of course, everything Venom is hot. Even if it's simply just a piece of his origin. Uh, this undervalued key, what could it be? You know it. Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars Issue 8. Yeah, the origin of the black symbiote costume that becomes Venom. It's the second appearance of Spider-Woman, Julia Carpenter. But like I say, it's all about that origin of the uh, symbiote costume. And the new black costume is explained as an alien costume in this issue. Now we've got Amazing Spider-Man 252. There's Marvel Team Up 141. There's Spectacular Spider-Man issue 90, which were all published in May of 1984, seven months before the release of Secret Wars 8 in December. However, in Marvel's continuity, the events in Secret Wars issue 8... Uh, take place before Amazing Spider-Man 252 and the like. So, in continuity, this is the first appearance. So, what did it do this time round? Well, it sold 11 copies. It had a seven-day trend of plus 133% and a high sale CGC 9.8. Went for $285. What did I pay? Zilch, zero. I managed to win this in a great price uh, package from... One of my favorite YouTubers, Joker68. Fantastic. It's only probably mid-grade. It's got a bit of a color break increase down the middle. But I wouldn't pay a lot for this book anyway. And it still presents nicely in the Myler. Number 15 on our list. Marvel all the way at the moment. And it is from 1991. Now there are rumors, strong rumors at the moment, that a Deadpool 3 movie is in production under Disney. And uh, with a few character leaks. And uh, that has made the first appearance of Deadpool get hot again. And we all know the book, guys. It is one that is on my radar, probably for next year now. The New Mutants, issue 98. Yeah, the first appearance of Deadpool, a.k.a. Wade Wilson. And I'm looking forward to more from Ryan Reynolds. What did it do? It sold 16 copies, had a seven-day trend of plus 97%, and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for $786.50. Now, I've seen these at cons in the 200 range. I remember being at a con once, and it was on for 100, and I reckon I could have got it for 80, but it had a sticker right bang in the middle of the New Mutants writing, and I don't know whether, I mean, I'm good at getting stickers off with the old hairdryer, but I'm not sure whether I could have budged that, and 80 quid, I think, was a bit steep for a gamble. But like I say, it's on my radar. $786.50 for a 9.88. -A. Now, number 14 on our list, and this has got to be the book, in my opinion, of 2020. Um, one of my good friends, Comic Vantage Lewis, 
has four copies, I believe. And it was a book I always thought had potential, but I was I was always a bit tight fisted and I didn't want to pay three figures. It was roughly around that rate, the hundred range. But now, oh my days, this book is going crazy. And of course we are getting uh, season two of The Mandalorian and Rosaria Dawson has been confirmed to be Ahsoka Tano. Now I finished The Clone Wars fantastic finale if you haven't seen it guys that final episode is uh breathtaking and then now we're watching rebels me and my boy and uh she's in that bit older um but every time she comes on screen she kind of dominates and i love that um really powerful jedi right up there with like mace windu and obi-wan and yoda for me um her first appearance we all know it comes in Star Wars, The Clone Wars, issue number one. Yeah, and as well as that, being Ahsoka's first appearance, it's also Captain Rex's first appearance. Now, Captain Rex is also rumoured to be appearing in Mandalorian Season 2. Now, which is a little bit odd because Tamora Morrison is going to be playing Boba Fett. But, of course, he was the Clone Troopers too, and Jango Fett. So, is he going to be playing two roles in the, sh in the show? Anyway, I'm seeing Captain Rex now in The Rebels, and it's great to get him back. Great, great character. So, what did this book do? Well, it sold 10 copies, believe it or not, and it had a seven-day trend of plus 161%, and a high sale, CGC 9.8, went for $899.99. And then there was an update a few days later, and this is insane stuff because a 9.8 went for a whopping $1,400. Oh my days. That is the book of all books. 2020's number one book. Love to find that. I think it was a G-Dub I watched. He, he found a copy for a dollar. Unbelievable. Now, uh, we're sticking with Marvel because we've had a lot of Marvel. With that exception of the Dark Horse, uh, Clone Wars. And... This next book is from 1976, and much like last year, we are getting a lot, lot of rumours regarding the character of Nova. And his first appearance comes in this book, The Man Called Nova, issue number one. Yeah, Nova number one, the first appearance and origin of the first Nova, Richard Ryder. A great, great book and a great read. This is the first appearance also of Centurion Nova Prime, Roman Day, who appeared in the Guardians of the Galaxy number one movie. we got various relatives making their first appearances of Richard Ryder in this book too. Now, thanks to these rumours, 17 copies have just sold, with a seven-day trend of plus 102% and a high sale CGC 9.8, Went for a staggering $999.99. Again, this is a book I'm considering getting slabbed. Um, it could be in the eights, I reckon. Uh, you know, my initial thought was a seven, but I'm a very harsh grader. Now, I paid 20 quid for this in back end of 2017, but it is a pence copy. So uh, we'll see. But, you know, these more valuable books, I find that the pence doesn't detract too much. A perfect uh, indication of that is my Tales of Suspense 52. Uh, a 5.0 is going for the same as a 5.0 cents copy, and mine's a pence. So, number 12 on our list. And I actually just read this today, and it was a great read. Very, very dark. Some potty mouth language in it as well. Now, like I say, an image book from 2014. And... Snyder gives updates on two of his projects, and that was Undiscovered Country and Witches. And he said that both are now in active development. Now, we've all, always known about the witches getting a bit of heat because there's been rumours on and off. But now he says they're working on a screenplay, a screenplay and a draft. So uh, now this could still be a couple of years away, but... If this transfers what I've read onto screen, oh my days, we got a winner, I think. Booking questions, of course, is which is number one from 2014. 
I sold a copy just the other day and I sold it off cheap as well. I'm a nice guy. Um, but uh, if they can find a distributor for the TV or, or cinema rights, like I said, this could be a winner. It sold 17 copies, had a seven day trend of plus 110% and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for $69.99. And uh, it's a stunning jock cover, isn't it? But this is very dark. Very brutal and uh, good stuff. I paid two quid for this in uh, the middle of 2018 at an Emporium, which is like an antique store. So number 11 on our list. And it is a book from uh, DC and it came out in 1999. Uh, 1999. And this was announced two weeks ago that uh, seven studios were fighting to win the rights to put this comic into a film and it was a it's a new one on me i didn't know about this now it's greatly helped of course by you got two big names in the rock and emily blunt now it suddenly sort of blew up overnight and this week like i say it's our number 11 the book in question look from dc comics is ball and chain guys ball and chain Yep, and it's going to star The Rock and Emily Blunt. What can I tell you about it? Well, it sold 11 copies. It had a seven-day trend of plus 183% and a high-sale war copy went for $56. And by all accounts, it's a pretty fun story. So we're in to the big top 10. I'm doing okay so far. Number 10 on our list. And... Uh, the character of Null is one of the hottest characters out there right now. And the debate was going, what was his first cover appearance? I've said it before. Some people were saying this Venom 5 trade dress variant. Not for me. It was always this book. The book in question, Venom, issue 3, from Don Donny Cates, of course. And this is the third printing cover art from Ryan Stegman. The first cover appearance of Null. Now, the regular Venom 3 goes between 50 and 60. I've got the second print image, which goes about 20. But this one is just on fire. It really is on fire. When I noticed it was 120, I checked on Comic Book Realm, which I store on my books, and I, I couldn't see it on there. And I thought, what? I'm sure I got that. And lo and behold, I did. So a great book. Uh, one of the few times that a later printing when beat number of the first printing. It sold 18 copies, had a seven day trend at plus 116% and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for a whopping $325. Yeah, the first cover for appearance of the God of the Symbiotes. And what's nice about this, just 9,765 copies. This issue went on sale in October, 2018. Number nine on our list and Donny Cates has plans for a wraith and he has hinted at a direct connection to the character I've just talked about, Null. And people are just loving the character of Null. The first appearance of Wraith, I've spoken about it before, is in Annihilation Conquest Wraith issue number one. Now this is a book I'm always looking for at cons and I can never find it guys. So I hope you've had better luck than me. The first appearance of Wraith sold 20 copies at a seven day trend of plus 108% and a high sale raw went for $99. Oh my days, I wouldn't pay nowhere near that. Maybe 20, no I don't even think I paid 20. I'm a bit tight. So number eight on our list and this is a great one. Why? Because this is the, from my first two years of collecting, basically I only collected DC Comics. Uh, I blame the Arrowverse for that. It was a big um, Green Arrow fan at the time. So I was at a car boot in Cheltenham and this lady was selling a load of comics. And I got excited, but there were no DC. And my heart dropped a little bit. So, you know, but she had a ton of Marvel. And if I had known, I would have picked up so many good books. So anyway, I had a quick little flutter through, fired up my comic book realm at the time. And I picked out the most valuable book that she had at the time. And... One of the best Wolverine covers that there is. Here we go. Yeah, it is Incredible Hulk issue 340. A blast from the past. 
classic Hulk Wolverine cover. I love the way he reflects in the blades. It's a Hulk versus Wolverine battle in this. We've got X-Men and leader appearances. And it's drawn by the legendary Todd McFarlane. Now, why are people turning to this? I don't know. But, it, you know, it's always been a respectable book. It sold 11 copies at a seven-day trend up plus 199%. And a high sale raw, uh, sorry, a high sale CGC 9.8 went for a whopping $436. And I'll tell you when I bought this, because I made a note of it. My first ever Marvel book, I paid £4 for this copy in uh, the 9th of April 2017, my first ever Marvel book. Good to see that one back. Number seven on our list, another Marvel book from 1990. The first cameo appearance of Danby is trending and it's trending pretty substantially. There's talk that Gambit may be getting into the Disney Plus, maybe his own show. There was talk that Channing Tatum was gonna play him in a movie, but no, that was quashed and I'm glad because He's more wooden than Pinocchio for me. But uh, the book in question, we all know it, from 1990, X-Men Annual 14. Now, this predates Uncanny X-Men 366. Now, chronologically, the second story takes place before, the, before or during the events in the first story. And uh, it predates 266 by a month. This sold 21 copies at a seven day trend of plus 107% and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for $256. Now I paid £8.50 for this in uh, November 2017. I've sold another copy in about the 15 to 20 range a little while ago. Um, it's got a nice uh, pinup actually featuring Wolverine, Colossus, Havoc and Longshot and that comes from Kevin Nolan. And it also, believe it or not, contains an alternate cover to this comic by Michael Golden. I do like Gambit. I said it before, I like the character, uh, the actor Tyler Kiss who played him in Wolverine Origins. Number six in our list, just never out of my top 20. With rules now hitting between 150 and 200, the first appearance of Miles Morales is moving fast. And of course, his first appearance comes in Ultimate Fallout, issue number four, the first printing, Second printing has his face revealed. It's heating up because, of course, we're getting into the Spider-Verse 2. But he's also being talked about as being in the coming to the MCU fairly soon. Um, now, this Marvel Previews book, 95, has been heating up as well. I know uh, my good friend uh, Lyric sold one for a nice profit the other day. So... First appearance of Mars Morales. What did it do this time round? Well, it sold 25 copies at a seven day trend of plus 98% and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for $550. This is a book I think I might have to get graded at some point. I think it could hit a nine, maybe. So I paid £13.90 for this in March of 2018, just around about the time that. Uh, or the, the initial talk was coming out about uh, Into the Spider-Verse. So uh, a great book. I've passed on a couple of copies and I'm kind of regretting that now. One about 20 quid and one about uh, 45 at a recent con. Now number five on our list. And I'm excited to see this one because I read this and it wasn't a bad read actually. Uh, it was on my radar for quite some time. I'd like option books. Now this comes from DC's Vertigo line and it was announced... Uh, the book came out in 2009 and it was recently announced that uh, it is going to be coming into a live action series, believe it or not. And that is, is connected with Robert Downey Jr.'s uh, producing it. The book in question, Sweet Tooth, issue number one from Jeff Lemire. Yeah, this is a bizarre story, this one. Got the first appearance of Gus and Jeopard in this, who is Sweet Tooth. Uh, the premiere issue of an ongoing series about a young man with deer-like features who must make a dangerous journey to a place of refuge while being hunted. Yeah, it sounds bizarre. It really is. Now, Hulu uh, ordered a pilot initially in November of 2018. So, what did it do? 
Well, it sold 12 copies at a seven-day trend of plus 217% and a high sale raw went for $135. What did I pay for this? 10 quid in February of 2019. I always had a little feeling about that one when I picked it up. Now, number four on our list. There's news, of course, swirling about Nova appearing in the MCU, specifically with an Annihilation storyline coming into play. Now, while Richard Reuter is obviously the, the main hit, um, you've got the first appearance of Sam Alexander that comes in point one, Marvel point one. And this book is the wraparound variant cover from Nick Bradshaw. Yeah, bit of a surprise, but that's made it into our top 10 guys. First appearance of Sam Alexander, the wraparound variant from Nick Bradshaw. And that's a book from 2011. Now, what did it do? It sold 18 copies at a seven day trend plus 148% and a CGC 9.8 went for $120 of that book. I've got the regular cover of the first Sam Alexander, but if we can find that one on the cheap, yeah, why not does he? Now, number three on our list is, this is a fun one because we spoke about Deadpool 3. And there was a rumour reportedly uh, coming that uh, a couple of villains have been announced. And one of those was Typhoid Mary, who was initially uh, appeared in a Daredevil. Uh, is it Daredevil 250 or 254? One of those, I can't really remember. But I got the first appearance of Typhoid Mary. Now, the other character, the other villain, uh, I made a hot comic book alert about. And that was... Madcap, yeah, and his first appearance comes in Captain America issue 307. Yeah, Madcap is apparently going to be one of two villains in Deadpool 3. Now, take it with a pinch of salt because that comes from We Got This Covered. But they have been known to get a few things right. Now, who knows, I sold a copy the other day for about eight quid. And uh, regardless, collectors are jumping in and they bought 11 copies and it had a seven day trend of plus 348% and a high sale raw went for $45. So why am I selling one for eight quid, I'll ask you. But uh, this is my better copy. I paid three quid for this in the back end of 2017. That was at my local con, the Gloucester Comic Con. Now here's a book, number two on our list that I was speculating about a bit myself. Why? Because I watched the Hawks Agents of Smash and it, the character appears in that. Uh, it is a, a future imperfect book. Uh, Hulk future imperfect number one. Basically in one of the animated episodes Hulk battles himself from the future and it made me look up for the book and I had it on my searches and then Peter David it's going to be releasing a follow-up story in August to the much-beloved Future Perfect. So this is why this book is getting renewed love. It is a book from March of 1992. Here we go, guys. Number two on our list. Future Imperfect. It's all about the Incredible Hulk. What did that book do? Well, I will soon tell you. It sold 26 copies. It had a seven day trend of plus 168% and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for $95. That leaves us with number one on our list. Can I get it in within 30 minutes? It's gonna be tight. But uh, somehow this book makes it back to number one for two weeks in a row while selling half as many cop uh, copies compared to the previous week with uh, 36 copies sold. It still had a seven day trend of plus 134% and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for $166, passing the last week's high of 9.8 of $130. The book in question is Youngblood 2, the pink logo variant, the first appearance of Profit. Yay, John Profit. And uh, of course, Mark Guggenheim is going to be bringing a movie, I believe, to the screen. Uh, so Rob Liefeld will be over the moon. Yep, there's the green logo and there is the pink logo and it's the pink one that is selling very well at the moment. I always used to think this was a second printing, but now it's just a different logo. So that's it. That's our top 20. What did I do this week? I had a really good week last week of 15. This week, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Respectable again. Thanks for everyone who subscribes to me. If you do like what you see, please subscribe, give the thumbs up, and mean the world to me. Take care. Bye for now.